Have you ever tried to whisk milk by hand? I actually hadn't until this morning, and five minutes later, whew, my arm was sore and I was running late to this recording session. And I still had flat milk. Some jobs just demand a little bit more horsepower, which sometimes requires some special tools, like this electric whisker. Now watch this, same milk, same goal, but I turn this baby on, put it in the milk, and it's faster, smoother, and easier. And that's what GPUs bring to generative AI in containers. They don't just speed things up, they make the whole process practical at scale. I'm Ian, and I'm a cloud advocate here in Redmond, Washington at Microsoft HQ, and today I'm joined by Brian Benz. Brian is here to show us what that looks like in action. GPUs aren't just a luxury add-on, they're what take Gen AI from fun demos to real world workloads. Brian, let's go ahead and dive in. Awesome, thanks, Ian. Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna show you today is a little demo that I put together for running Gen AI in containers with GPUs. Um, I built a model uh, and a repo that basically creates images for you without going out to an image service. Uh, and well, I'm gonna start with a demo and then I'm gonna show you how it actually works and how I actually put it together. All right, so this is the demo. It's not running right now, but basically you can generate an image and there's the last image that it generated. It was a watercolor of fall colors in a forest with a lake. Uh, and um, you've also got text embeddings that you could do as well. But I'll show you how all this works in a second. First, let's get the actual demo started. To do that, I'm gonna to go to Visual Studio Code. I've already created a Docker image, so I can just say Docker run, and it's going to run this image in a container for me. It's a Spring Boot application. It uses several different things, including Onyx, uh, stable Diffusion for image generation, uh, NVIDIA CUDA for accessing the GPUs, and a bunch of other stuff that I'll explain afterwards. But let's get started with the actual demo. So I can go to this demo at localhost 8080 now, which is this, fire it up. Okay, so here's a clear one. And I've been enjoying watercolors lately of a pine forest in and a lake, <clears throat> just something simple like that. All right, so what this is gonna do, when I hit this button, it's gonna fire off a process and it's going to create several images. So down here, if I scroll down past the performance warnings, it still performs pretty well. Uh, but what this code does is it actually loads a couple of things from stable diffusion a couple of things that it needs to generate images, uh, including um, VAE and a couple of other things. Uh, it's going to use CUDA to access the GPU on my local machine. Uh, and it's going to have a model, stable diffusion 1.5. There's a model path that's built into the repo over here, right there, you can see the models. Um, and what it does is it actually generates, as part of Stable Diffusion, there's some built-in text. So Stable Diffusion is a text to image generator. Uh, it creates a prompt. So I created a simple prompt, which was watercolor of a pine forest uh, with a lake. And uh, basically the image here, it's actually creating a meta prompt for me. So it's added in some information based on a couple of things. And it also has some safety checks that it does. And then it actually starts to generate the embedding and it does inference steps. It does 40 inference steps, steps 40, guidance 7.5, seed 42. That means it has some images that it uses as a seed uh, and it has some guidance that's built into it as well. That's one of the things about stable diffusion. So it's gonna go through 40 inference steps and basically it's creating image layers. It created the 40 layers uh, it's going to decode it. It runs the safety check to make sure there's nothing uh, unsafe in here based on some parameters that are in the default stable diffuser safety check. Generates the image and it created it in 80 seconds. So let's go ahead and look at that image. There it is. 
Hey, nice. Um, so one minute, 32 seconds. The code also, so I used NVIDIA CUDA to access my GPU. It falls back to a CPU if the code doesn't actually uh, have access to a GPU. Uh, so it'll work on either, but it takes over five minutes to generate the same image. So what would you actually use this for? Um, image services are great, and I've gained a new appreciation of how they work and how good they are uh, by building my own example from scratch on my local machine, uh, but they cost money. So if you are just generating a one-off image once in a while, it's probably faster and better to use one of the image generation services out there. Uh, we have some built into Azure and there's others as well. Um, but if you have to generate 10,000 images or convert 10,000 images from one thing to another, maybe create cartoons from photos or whatever, um, then using something like this solution where you run everything locally is the way to go. And you can use a GPU. Mine's a pretty primitive GPU on my laptop, uh, but you can also deploy to GPUs on Azure, uh, on virtual machines and something called Azure Container Apps. All right, so anyway, um, there's another thing here that I can show you. It's less exciting, uh, but it just runs a text comparison to see what the similarity is between these two pieces of text. And if you have a large piece of text, obviously it's better, but this is just a symbol, similarity score that runs. And if you look at the code here, it actually checks uh, the similarity score here. And it's much faster in the GPU than it is on a CPU once again. <clears throat> so how to actually build all this? Let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, the first thing I had to do was get stable diffusion. So if you look at my Visual Studio code here, you can see the models. I've downloaded two models. The one's called Mini LM L6 V2. Uh, the other one is called uh, Stable Diffusion, and it's got a safety checker, text encoder, UUNet, or UNet, and VAE decoder in here as well. These are all things that are going to image processing. But I needed to talk to Java and make sure that I could access these and run them locally. Uh, to do that, there is a tool, uh, basically an interoperability uh, set of libraries and standards called ONNX, Open Neural Network Exchange. You might have seen that in the command line when I was uh, running this. So basically what that does is allows you to, um, if I go down here, the key is right here. The technical design, they provide a definition of extensible computational graph model, as well as definitions of built-in operators and standard types. Great. Okay. So I needed to use the Onyx uh, uh, basically decoders and to work with stable diffusion. All right. And then to get stable diffusion, I could have gone to stable diffusion uh, website, downloaded Stable Diffusion, and encoded it and built in the framework around it to be used by code myself. But Hugging Face had uh, inside their, they have Onyx community, they have 796 models built by Onyx community. Um, and one of them is Onyx community Stable Diffusion v15 Onyx. Okay. So I was able to download this. Um, whoops. I was able to download this, uh, and then I was able to make that part of my code. So once again, getting back over here, um, over here, we have the, uh, code that I was able to download. So you just download this. Great. But then how do you actually access it from Java? because you have to do all these functions, uh, check for safety, text encoder, UNet, and VAE decoders. It's just part of image processing that you need to do. So I could download these from Stable Diffusion, but then how do I actually access them in my code? That was the next tricky part. And for that, I used something called SD4J. So SD4J is called Stable Diffusion in Java. It's an Oracle, um, repo and it's uh, open source. All of the things I'm showing you here are open source and public domain, which is great. Uh, so I was able to include them in my app. Uh, but Stable Diffusion in Java is a modified port of the C Sharp implementation for Onyx runtime, but it's written in Java. So this saved me a ton of time. Um, it was able to 
It targets Onyx Runtime 114. And by the way, this was the hardest part, was making sure that all of the different versions of Onyx, SD4J, and CUDA worked together to access my GPU and make that run in one minute versus five minutes with no GPU. Um, these are some of the examples, but uh, inside of here, there's a uh, great code for and a text tokenizer, which you need as well for actually building this. So I was able to make this part of my repo. The last piece of the puzzle is CUDA. So CUDA is an NVIDIA uh, tool that allows you to access GPUs and any NVIDIA GPU, whether it's running on your local laptop or on a server or in a virtual machine or what we call Azure Container Apps, uh, runs through um, CUDA. And then CUDA, acts, uh, you call your Java code, you call CUDA, uh, and CUDA accesses the GPU, uh, finds a GPU that it can use and runs all the processes on that GPU. And once again, I mentioned it falls back to a CPU if it can't find anything that runs, but really cool stuff. Putting all this together only took a couple of days. Uh, and the way I did that, I could certainly have coded it by hand. It probably would have taken a month or I, I don't know how long it would have taken, but there's so many pieces here that basically uh, making them all work together and making them all compatible with the different versions that you need to use uh, is pretty complex. So to do that, I'm not afraid to uh, admit that I used uh, some large language model performance enhancing uh, models. And uh, in this case, I used agent mode in Visual Studio Code GitHub Copilot with Claude Sonnet 4.5. So Claude Sonnet 4.5 uh, is really, really good when you've got sort of a green field and you need some advice on how to build things. And then you actually need to perform the code checks and debug your brand new code. There's another new model that's out, GPT-5 Codex, that I find a bit better for refactoring as well. I just want to mention those two. Those are brand new as of this recording. But Claude Sonnet 4.5 really... Uh, I have Claude Sonnet 4 or 5 to thank for a lot of the code that was generated here or to blame if there's something wrong with it. Uh, and one of the cool things it did is I had it put together a prompt, a really complex prompt here. Uh, before we started, it's 750 lines and it even includes source code and some of the things I needed to build Maven and all that stuff for Java. So 753 lines prompt. And then you put that prompt into GitHub Copilot and in agent mode and basically just let it generate the framework of the code. Then it took two or three days of debugging to actually make this work. So that in a nutshell uh, is everything that I wanted to show you for running Gen AI containers for GPUs. Please do check out the code at akams slash GPU on Azure. Let me know what you think of it and enjoy. Hey all, thanks for watching and following along with us. If you would like to find supporting content resources and the code we used, you can find them at aka.ms forward slash Java and AI for beginners. It's also linked in the description of this video and we'll see you in the next episode.